Hello everybody, my name is Michael, and in today's video what we're going to be doing is this right here. So if that looks exciting to you guys, please carry on and watch the video. Oh, and just one more thing before we go. Please consider like, commenting, and subscribing if you enjoy the video. But now with all that out of the way, let's carry on with the video. Okay, so the first thing I've done here is all I've done is just place a little bit of sand for my driveway place it onto the miniature and then prime that over just before we get started painting into the miniature. And then to get started, we want to come in with bright green here. And of course, what we want to do is we want to paint all over that miniature completely covered in this nice bright green. Now, this is going to take a little bit of time since we have quite a lot of scales on here. And the best suggestion too is to thin this paint down a little bit so we can really get that paint easily and nicely flowing into the cracks and the recesses in this miniature since we've got so many nicely sculpted scales into this miniature it's going to take a little while and maybe even take a few looks over once it's dry just to touch up and get anywhere at those scales that you haven't gotten because i know i missed quite a few while painting this over since it has so many scales in there so be mindful of that too when you're giving it full coverage with this color then once you have full coverage of our nice bright green here, we're going to come in with some squid pink. And it's a nice bright colour. And what we're going to be using this for is of course the inside of that mouth and really get that in there. And in between all those teeth, really giving that nice bright, bright colour. Since we're going for a nice overall nice and bright uh, constrictor snake here, we really want to make sure we emphasise all those colours. And squid pink is going to be a great colour to do this, especially inside that nice wide open jaw of the mouth. Then once we have that mouth done, what we're going to be doing now is coming in with some dark green. And what we're going to be doing with this dark green is we're going to be dry brushing it over the top of the miniature. Now, we're going to be focusing this more of an overbrush rather than a dry brush. We're not going that hard and we're not taking off huge chunks of uh, paint on our brush. We're just taking off a little bit and then carefully going over it with our dry brushing technique, which is just slowly going over and over. And what we're going to be doing is slowly layering this up till we have a nice dark top color of our snake. So we want to be keeping all that belly and underneath that nice bright green, but all the top we want to be darkening down with our dark green we've got here. And it's going to take a little while to do this, especially since this miniature is all winding in on itself. So spend a little bit of time and really make sure you get that color right. Then once you're happy with that nice dark green we've got on the top of our snake here, we're going to come in with some black. And what we're going to be doing with this is we're going to be doing a lot of the detailing of our miniature here. And by the detailing, I'm meaning the pat patterning and markings that our giant constrictor snake is going to have. Now, I've looked at a lot of uh, reference pictures of different uh, snakes, pythons, anacondas, all, all different types of constrictor snakes here. And I've come up with a pattern that I've uh, seen and I've liked. And it's just a matter of trying to replicate that but if you want to copy what i'm doing here it's sort of basically long uh i should say more fat long vertical sort of ovals along the back we're going with two nice big stripes just by the eyes and meeting to the back of the head and some completely sort of rough drawn in circles on the underbelly so this is what we're going to be doing here really spending the time getting them right and i'm not making these spots perfectly even either i'm just roughly picking out places trying to make it semi-random because we don't want it to make it look uniform it's then going to look really really fake and stand out so we want to try to go for a natural sort of look so vary up the sizes too if you want to make it add to that realism factor then once you have all those spots and stripes and dots all picked out that you want, we're going to come in now with some nice orange. Now, I've seen on a few uh, different types of snakes, that the uh, constrictor snakes, that they usually have either an orange or a red sort of stripe along here. And I'm basing this one especially off the movie uh, Anaconda. If you remember that, it had very sort of bold, vibrant patterns. And I'm trying to replicate that here since we have basically a giant anaconda. So the orange is going to be a nice, bright focal point of color. And it's going to really help stand out. So we want to definitely get in between those stripes that we've drawn on the side of the face here. As well as that, we're also going to be picking out the uh, circles that we have on the underbelly. We're going to be dotting some of this orange in the center there, really giving a nice uh, color to those under dots since we need to have that nice variety of color in there as well. So be careful, pay a lot of attention to doing this, and try and keep your pattern semi-random and consistent, so don't make them perfect circles. As you can see, I'm dabbing them on here, giving a sort of randomish pattern. 
Then once we have those orange parts complete, we're going to come in now with some flat yellow, which is a nice, another bold, bright colour on the miniature. And I want to be, of course, picking out the eyes with our nice bright yellow, as well as picking out the eyes here. We've got being very, very careful, making sure that we don't want to paint over any of these other patterns that we've got on here. I'm also going to be doing sort of a half dot slash, like, semi-circle crescent shape on the sides of the... Uh, underbellies that were painted here all those little dots that are painted in orange I'm going to be just painting around a few of them uh, if not all of them with just sort of dots and semicircles just painting in random points of it to really get in a different look and make it look like it's got a blending color pattern on there too to really help emphasize and give them a nice looking image from a piece from the distance and then now with those yellow areas picked out, we're going to come in now with some Caribou Crimson. And this is a nice red wash. And we're going to be using this for the inside of the mouth that we've got here. So we've got that nice squid uh, pink color that we've got here. We're going to be washing it with our red, really sort of uh, fleshing it up. And it's going to really help get into those nice recesses. And rather than go with a black or something else like that darkening down, we want to enrich those colors. So Caribou Crimson being a nice red wash is going to really help add to that vibrancy of the piece. Then once we have that red wash completely dry inside the mouth, we're going to come in now with some Seraphim Sepia. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be giving this a wash over the entirety of the miniature. Now the reason why I've gone with Seraphim Sepia rather than a brown is I didn't want to muddy the colors up too much, but I wanted to give it a realistic sort of color effect. And I felt going with uh, brown and agrax or something like that would be a little too strong of color so i wanted to have that muted down rather than washing it down and changing the properties too much i felt like going with the sepia since it's, the snake's only slithering around in the grass and picking up some sort of dirt and patchy uh, randomness of colors is going to help dull it down and Sarah from sepia i think is going to be a little bit better of a choice because i didn't want it to be too dark as if we had gone with a brown wash so hopefully it works out the way we want and really give off that nice effect as well as that it's also going to dull down those brighten colors really tie them in together and get in between those scales and really help give that extra punch then once we have that wash complete we're going to come in now with some ivory which of course is a nice uh, off-white color not quite intense white because we don't want our teeth to be completely bright white one will be just a little bit darker and ivory is going to be a great color for this and like I said, we're picking out the teeth, so it's just a matter of coming in and really picking out those teeth carefully. So you switch down to a nice finer point brush if you have to. And as you can see, I'm going along and catching it more with the side of the tip of the brush rather than actually placing the tip on there. Give you a little bit more control when you're painting in fine details like teeth and such. And then once we have those teeth all nice and picked out, we're going to come in once again with black. And what we want to do is we want to come in and pick out those eyes and get in that nice slit of the eyes for our nice uh, snake eyes looking so you can see i've switched to a very fine brush to get uh, a lot more brush control and really carefully focusing on those vertical lines to really bring out those eyes and make them come out the best that i can do anyway so spend a little bit of time on this don't worry if you mess them up a little bit just come back in with that yellow and keep practicing till you get it where you're happy and then once we've done that, we're going to come in with one more special sort of added in effect, and that is going to be using some gloss varnish. And what we're going to be doing with our gloss varnish is we're going to be placing it inside the mouth to really get in that nice, wet, sort of salivary mouth look. It's going to really hopefully add in that nice bit of extra special effect and really make that miniature come to life. Then once you've done that, it's just a matter of basing your miniature and enjoying the piece. So check out these photos of our miniature when we're completed. With all that complete, we have finally finished painting up our giant constrictor snake from the Dungeons and Dragons WizKids line. So I hope this video has been helpful for you guys. Whether you want to follow along, we just enjoy watching these videos for some inspiration for your own miniatures. And with all that said guys, I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I can't wait to see you all in the next video.